The thing that I wanted most before I switched to Vim was vertical movement. So often you need to move, say, to this line. How do you do that in your usual editor? Either you just do this, unlikely, or I use my mouse. And that's pretty suboptimal. Thankfully, Vim provides amazing ways to move vertically, which I'm going to show off to you today. First of all, the bigger jumps uh, vertical. Control F and Control B. The mnemonics for that is Control F, so Control forward, Control B, Control backward. So, first of all, let me toggle this, Control F, and I go forward, Control B, and I go backward. And as you can see, the cursor stays mm, at the bottom if we're going up and at the top if we're going down. You might not like this behavior, and actually there's a fix, but not in VS Code as far as I'm aware, or at least I haven't tried. So let's go to uh, the place where I fixed this. Here it is. So after you use Control F or Control B, you can then uh, make it do ZZ, which center, centers your screen. ZT uh, moves your cursor up. Well, it doesn't move your cursor, it moves your screen down, so your cursor is up. And ZB, uh, same thing, but down. The, the mnemonics for that is Z. Actually, I don't know the mnemonic for this one, but Z top and Z bottom. Here it is. All right, coming back. Uh, now, you don't always want to jump an entire screen. And just now we jumped up and I'm not sure if I jumped over something that I uh, wanted to get to. So I'm at the end of, of the file I want to get somewhere up, say register hotkeys, I do control B, well I jumped over it and I might not have noticed it because it's a bit too fast. Well, this is why usually the hotkeys that I use are control D for control down and control U for control up. These only move your screen like half a screen, as you can see. They are quite a bit more manageable in terms of understanding where you are. However, they are almost more weird in your usual Vim. Uh, sure. No. I'll show off this file. So, I think I fixed them here as well. Uh, when I do Control D and Control U, my cursor stays in the middle, which is what I expect. But by default, they move in a really strange way. Try it out for yourself. Maybe you disagree, which is good, I guess. It's always better when you're fine with the default, because then if you use Vim on some uh, machine that is not yours, you won't need your config as much. So. This is why I think it's better to get used to the default rather than change it. Not in most situations, but it's generally better. So the way I fix this, uh, these two lines, when I do Control D, uh, I actually, well, I could use Control D again, but I like the consistency of my jumps. When I do Control D, I actually go 12 down and then center my screen. For Control U, I go 12 up and then center my screen. And you can see uh, J and K there. Well, these are the most uh, used keys because those keys are just down and up. 
The reason why I didn't show them off to you as the first thing is because this is pretty damn stupid and inefficient, as you can see by things slowing down significantly. This is why I pretty much never press J or K twice in a row. On the left you can see the line numbers, which are kind of weird. Well, where my cursor is, uh, on the left you can see the actual line number, but everything else is a relative line number. In Vim, you can prepend a number to anything to make it repeat that many times. Same goes for down and up. So let's say I want to get to this line, return string. I can do 9 down, and here I am, where I want it to be. This is the reason why I think relative line numbers are probably the most important setting in Vim. 11, down, uh, 11 up, rather, 13 down. It's a bit uh, weird at first. But once you get used to it, it's just so nice to use. And uh, let me actually show you the setting that you need to use. These two, number and relative number. If you use Lua, I used Lua by the, by the way, you probably already know about these. So I'm going to show these in Vim script, in case you're not quite sure about uh, switching to Lua yet. But if you're interested, I have a video on that. So I think I already removed Vim script from my mind because I hate it. But let's try. Um, so you do set number. Yeah, that's simple. Which is good when you start out. But if you're trying to make anything complicated, you start hating Vim script. I, I'm telling you. No Lua formatter, that is not what I want. Uh, and relative number. So these two settings seem very, very similar. And why do I have both of them enabled? Well, uh, in VS Code, I think, is the default behavior no matter what. But in Vim Vim, if you just set relative number, then you wouldn't see thir 37 here, you would see zero. But if you set both relative number and number, so yeah, if you set both of them, then the current line will be the actual absolute line number and everything else will be relative. So. That's quite interesting. Now, I've been jumping around code, and when I want to go to the line of this input, I go 6 up, and then to the start of the line, usually. Generally, I want to start at the start of the line, especially in code. Well, I don't have to do this pretty much every single time down and then to the start of the line. There's actually a key for that. Minus and plus. So let's do the same thing again. 5 and then minus. Well, I remapped it to be underscore because pressing shift for one thing and not for the other is kind of weird. But by default it's minus and plus, which makes sense in terms of the mnemonic, but doesn't in terms of the ergonomics. So now, when I do plus, instead of going straight down, I went to the start of that line. And as you saw, you can combine this with numbers to, ju to jump that many lines down or up, and to the start of the line. When you're editing code, that is amazing. The amount of times that I've needed to do this after a jump is insane. 
So getting used to uh, minus and plus is really recommended. Okay, so now we can go to the start of the line. And the default, just somewhere. Guess where? It makes sense in terms of how you're used to using it, but I sometimes don't understand the logic of where you're gonna end up. Well, because of that, I want a more concrete way to know where I'm going to be. Often, when I jump to a line, I actually want to go to the end of it. So, see this line. This is waiting equals true. Essentially, I want to go to true, which is at the end of the line, where I can go and CIW to change it. I made a remap for this kind of purpose. Boom. Provide the number, then leader J goes 10 lines down and goes to the end of the line. And let's actually add a bunch of white space uh, after it and try it again, leader J. There's still white space here, but it didn't go there because it doesn't use uh, the dollar sign, it used G underscore, which goes to the last character of the line, excluding white space. In case you didn't know about that. Generally not useful, but really useful in remappings. Okay. So now, instead of going uh, six up, and then to the end of the line, I can just uh, go to the what? Well, that's strange. Worked now, huh? Let's try it again. Yeah, it works. Hmm. Whenever you try to show something off in a video, it immediately stops working. <laughs> but yeah, now I can more consistently go to the start or the end of the line. So if you want to go to this line, maybe it doesn't matter where I uh, end up, maybe somewhere in the middle, and then I'll get my way. Sure, I'll just use J and K. I want to change the name of the function. I'm going to use minus and plus. I want to go to the end to maybe change the width property. Then I'm gonna use my remap and actually, let me show you my remap. Here they are. Pretty simple. When leader k, go down and then to the last character of the line. So, uh, g underscore. I actually don't want this for operator, operator pending mode which is why I provided n and v to mean make a hotkey for normal mode and visual mode. If you don't provide anything here, this by default includes normal mode, visual mode, and oper operator pending mode, which I don't want here. Why? Because when you do delete, it now expects a text object, or emotion. And if I were to go up and then G underscore, well, what does this accomplish? I still deleted one line, but I went to the end of the other line. I'm not sure how useful that is. So I don't want that behavior, so I excluded it. Now, there is two keys that are incredibly useful in theory, but for some reason they don't work for me. Curly brackets. So in theory, it goes to, well, it goes through paragraphs, which in practice should mean to every other blank line. So it works, it works. 
Great, it works here. As expected, and it's really useful. But let's go to my code and see how this works here. What just happened? I'm really not sure why it skipped this blank line, this blank line, this blank line, this blank line, and this blank line. Why? Maybe it's because there is white space here? Because of the auto indenting. But I feel like it should account for that, no? So, yeah, indeed, it's the auto indent, which I can't delete with D. I mean, like this, I guess. And now it should work. But it's kind of wacky. So, to fix this behavior and make it a bit more manageable, um, I'm going to write a fix someday. So if you're interested in, in that, if you had this issue as well, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss it. Another way to do it, I have a mapping that deletes all the leading uh, white space. So now in theory it should work, and it does. So the easier solution would be to just get used to cutting uh, the trailing white space or make the curly brackets when used in normal mode for example uh, before every jump make them cut the trailing white space and I'm not sure how to do this in Vim I actually use a VS Code command so trim trailing yeah I use this and I actually do this by using a Vim sequence. How do I do that? I actually explain how to do that uh, in a video that's going to pop up right now. And if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content. But most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.